So, we've come to the last pillar, but I'm sure there are more, and I'll, I'm sure there'll be more videos as well when I go into details of the other pillars as well, because it's very simple, but it's also very complex. And it's also holistic, as I keep saying. It's all connected. You can't separate one from the other. So let's talk about now the fifth pillar, which I call the word or text. You could also call it the pillar of communication. And within that, as human beings, we communicate without necessarily speaking. By gesture, if I go or it's a gesture, it means something to you. We're very fortunate as human beings because we can make more than one sound, like a woof or a meow or a grrr. We have a language, and this language actually is, enables us to express ourselves, to, to um, talk very sophisticated, in a very sophisticated way about philosophy, our inner life, the outer world. Literature is vast on that level. When we speak as actors, I mentioned it when I was talking about the, um, the ball exercise. The three basic elements, the three basic styles of speaking are lyric. That means that I simply spill out what's within me. I go, oh God, look at that sun. Or, oh, it's very cold today. I don't need to be talking to anyone. I'm simply expressing myself. We have that in lyric poetry, where a person just talks in a very poetic way of their experiences from the world. I mean, in the painting, particularly in France, from the, and the um, end of the 19th century, we had all those wonderful different artistic styles like Impressionism, Expressionism. And in a way, lyric, the, the, the lyric style is about self-expression. The next one, is where you talk directly to someone. You need another person to be speaking to. And in that sense, it's dramatic. It's not just you. All monologues and soliloquies are really self-expression. But there's also an element of the dramatic with it as well. For example, in a speech, you're going to have a... a a moment within it where they're simply expressing themselves, what they're feeling. Also, within that speech, there's an element of telling you what happened in the past, this morning, yesterday, last year. And that's the element of, I call it the epic. So, in the, that's why the ball is so important. It enables us to experience the gesture of these styles and not just the conceptual element of it, most important. We also have within that um, pillar, word or text, the whole element of how we use our, our speech. I mentioned in the ball exercise, the difference between speaking speech. I don't think I did actually, I think that was another video I made. Um, about the upcoming three-week workshops that I'm doing on speech, speak the speech. We'll go into that very deeply in those, in those uh, intensives. But we get, we've got to master our technique. How long does it take to learn the piano? Very simple tunes, you can, Beatles tunes or popular songs or whatever. But to play Bach, Beethoven sonatas, Chopin. It's not just a six month course that you do. It's a great study over many years and it's a great art. And we have to bring that in now to our, um, our speak, speech element. And it's, it's, it's sadly neglected now because there are microphones everywhere. You know, I go to see theater now, particularly musicals, and they've all got these mics. We're losing the ability to actually speak. And, if we, and that means we'll lose the ability of language as well. 
So this last pillar is most important and it's connected to gesture, to style, to so many things and it's connected to all the other pillars as well. So the last pillar is really terribly important. I mean, it's not the last pillar, it could be the first, but you understand how we've built it all up from pillar number one, connecting to my instrument. And in speech work, you have an instrument, a speech instrument. You also have your own tone and vocal tone, your own voice as well. This connection between the instrument and number two is very important. For example, a musician can be technically perfect, but they have no artistic element within their work. There's no soul, there's no number two. So you can see the connection between number one, your instrument, and number two, your inner life, the whole life of soul. And not only your own soul, but connecting to Difficult concept, but I'll say it, the soul of the world, the whole artistic element of our work. And in the pillar with the ball, perceiving, I've already talked about that, how we bring that into how we throw the three basic um, ways of throwing the ball, the archetypal way, underarm, spilling, expressing yourself, no one need be there. The straight throw of the ball, the dramatic, you're speaking to someone. It can be gentle or it can be um, hard. A, 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 a straight does not mean um, angry, for example, or violent. We then also have the uh, element, the vocal element, to actually bring our, our, um, our, our vocal ability to be very, very flexible. Otherwise, we stay on one note all the time and have the one voice all the time, which is not necessarily the voice of the character. We then came to the third pillar, which I called Beyond Yourself, in a way, where we begin to connect into our number five through the work of improvisation. And that's a vast work as well. And there are fundamental um, techniques within it. Improvisation does not mean just winging it. To be free, you have to have limitations, and those exercises are very, very important. We also talked about, in the, in the, th the third pillar, how you go beyond yourself, out of your own ordinary everyday experiences, to create emotions and feelings in a very objective way, seems a paradox, to get the subjective life moving and flowing. We also talked about atmospheres, how to, to connect into that which is beyond you, the atmosphere of number three and how you create that. Number four, the landscape of imagination. Within that, we, we utter, utter our thoughts, utter our feelings. We speak within that, within the pictures, the inner pictures that we come. It's most important to understand that, that the work with imagination is not just pictures. For example, Mozart would hear a hear. It would just drop into him as sound, a whole symphony. Beethoven was the same as well, or he had uh, a bit more of a struggle than Mozart, I would say. It's also about this world of imagination. Um, it's not just pictures, it's hearing, a smelling imagination, for example, imagining this honey on the tip of your tongue, or you've just bit into a lemon. That's an imaginative faculty. So imagination or it has the word image in it. Image does not necessarily mean picture. There's a great difference between imagination and invention. It's important to make that distinction. And then the last pillar of it all, as I, say, as I said, it's not really last. Anyone can come first because they're part of a whole. There's no priority. There's no hierarchy here. It's not just sort of a line or levels. It's a circle. 
that's most important. And on that circle, you can place, well, it's the zodiac, really, which comes first. Another extraordinary um, area I'd like to research would be acting in the zodiac, but that's a whole nother lifetime, I think. So, that sums everything up. The five pillars of what? Of acting freedom. Not the five pillars of worry, angst, nervousness, frustration, not quite getting there, not being happy with yourself, feeling worthless, feeling, I can do this, I want to be an actor. Goodness me, what pretension that is. The five pillars of acting freedom. Thank you.